Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna go through this step-by-step -step on how to properly perform a chemical peel at home. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board-certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy watching today's content, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. So I personally love chemical peels in the sense they're really fun to do, but also a great way to incorporate into your routine to help tackle uneven skin tone, skin texture, and it can give you that instant glow before an event or or I say if you do it long term, it can certainly help with uneven skin texture and skin tone. Now I do peels in my office professionally and we have more ingredients as well as higher concentrations of what you typically find in drugstores or you know in Alta or Sephora. But nevertheless, we do have quite a few options available to consumers if you're not able to get into see a professional that can still be very effective. And that's what I wanna talk about today is the products that I recommend using as well as ways and steps that you should take to prepare your skin as well as how to care for your skin afterwards to really help your skin heal and really get the most out of your chemical peels. Now, majority of the peels that's available for purchase to do at home are going to contain a blend of various alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. And it's not uncommon for you to even see a combined AHA and BHA peel in one. And then there are other types of peels that are more gentle for sensitive skin. And you can also find few that are formulated with retinol. Now, for the majority, these ingredients are going to work in, like I said earlier, to help remove some of the, the dead skin buildup, so essentially exfoliating. And then when done on a regular basis, so usually I recommend doing them no more than once a week, it can certainly help over time improve hyperpigmentation and uneven skin texture, and as well as the appearance of fine lines. So as I mentioned, I do not recommend doing them more than once a week. Sometimes you will see them labeled for daily use, and that is really too much. And for the most part, regardless of what chemical exfoliant you use, you really should not be exfoliating on a daily basis. Incorporating an exfoliant into your routine, like a chemical peel, once or twice a week is more than enough. Over exfoliation is something I see all the time and really harms your skin barrier and works against what you're trying to achieve. So back to the ingredients, like I said, majority of the time you'll find a blend of alpha hydroxy acids. So typically glycolic acid is the most common, followed by lactic acid, sometimes you even find mandelic acid, polyhydroxy acid, plus or minus salicylic acid, and then some brands will even have a little bit of retinol in there. The highest concentration of glycolic acid that you can find over the counter without seeing a professional is usually around 20%. And there are a few products I'm gonna mention that I recommend if you're really looking to have a more professional result, but still something that is gonna minimize your irritation. Now, when it comes to picking your peels, look for ingredients that really help to target your concerns. So if your concerns are mostly dullness and even skin tone, then I recommend looking for mostly the alpha hydroxy acid category. Now, if you're also acne prone, but wanting to improve appearance of pores, oiliness, poor congestion, along with hyperpigmentation, then certainly a blend of alpha and beta hydroxy acids can be helpful. And as I mentioned earlier, some peels will even contain retinol, and there's one that I'm gonna to mention today, and that retinol really, along with the different blends of hydroxy acids, are gonna to work to improve the appearance of fine lines. So really look for that if anti-aging, fine lines and wrinkles are your concern. Now briefly, I just wanna mention what you will find professionally done either in a med spa or in a dermatology office are going to be these ingredients, but more intense or, or the addition of other ingredients that are really not appropriate for home use. So ingredients like phenol, ingredients like trichloric acetic acid that work better, but they also have a higher risk of hyperpigmentation and potentially scarring if, if it's done not appropriately. So these peels are great if you're wanting to start on something and work towards improving your skin texture and skin tone. But ultimately, if you're really looking to achieve results in the sense of tackling acne scars or say really going having a deeper peel to overall have a better result for improving fine lines and wrinkles then you may want to talk with your provider and consider in office chemical peels if you're new to chemical peels at home I recommend just going out and buying those pre-made peeling pads because for one they often have the formulation that you need to tackle your concerns and two they're packaged in a way where it's user-friendly these pads 
that you just apply on your skin so you're not getting it on places where you shouldn't be getting the exfoliants on and then also often will come with a neutralizing pad if needed to basically stop the reaction so it doesn't perpetuate and lead to hyperpigmentation or scarring what i don't recommend is going on amazon and looking for those liquid glycolic acid peels that are on the strength of 30 50 70 percent because those are truly professional grade and really should be done by an experienced provider i've seen chemical burns on patients from using these at home those peels are really hard to apply and require certain tools and brushes as well as caution so if you are new and wanting to just to maximize results and minimize skin damage or bad outcome go with pre-made peels are really meant to do what they're supposed to do okay so three products i want to recommend today if you are looking for a peel pad that works really well that i actually have on rotation in my skincare routine the first one is from the very popular dr dennis gross their alpha beta peel and i have the one extra strength daily peel they have one that's more universal that is more for a novice who've never done it and this one is just slightly higher concentration so this contains a blend of a glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, malic acid, as well as salicylic acid. So a blend of AHAs and BHA that's gonna help target poor congestion, you know, appearance of poor size, of fine lines and wrinkles, uneven skin texture and skin tone. And this comes with a peel pad as well as a neutralizing pad that you will use afterwards to again reduce uh, stop the reaction and out of the package you can see that it actually labels it very clearly number one the actual exfoliant and then two the neutralizer if fine lines and wrinkles and dullness is purely your concern and you know you're not a big fan of salicylic acid one brand that i recommend that is great with home peels that give good results is from extruvians and it's their most popular performance peel ap25 this contains 25 percent blend of glycolic acid mandelic acid and polyhydroxy acid that are great in improving those concerns and similarly it comes in a peel pad that's number one that you apply and then leaving it on for you know like 10 minutes or so and then neutralizing and that's also the benefit of these pads too is that the instructions will often tell you how long you should be leaving it on and then before you neutralize in office when we do these peels it's often under the discretion of the treatment provider when to neutralize and there are certain things we look out for that we want to re stop the reaction before it gets too late to reduce the adverse reaction of like hyperpigmentation or stabbing. So with these home peels, if you follow the instructions appropriately, it's very unlikely for you to get those, you know, unwanted desired outcomes. Last peel pad is Alpha Red, the Skin Better one. They're exfoliating peel pads. This is certainly the most expensive of all the ones I have talked about today. And it contains glycolic, lactic, and salicylic acid, as well as their Alpha Red. So patented retinol and lactic acid conjugate that helps to hydrate skin while improving fine lines. And this one, you don't neutralize. You just apply all over your face and you let it be and so this is another one if you're looking to improve signs of aging and you want to have a retinol in there as an active to again target signs of aging this would be one that you could consider using so those are a few products I recommend with you know different blends of ingredients to target different concerns now let's actually talk about how to prep your skin before the peel and how to take care of it post so if you are doing a chemical peel for the very first time it's really important that you stop any irritating exfoliating ingredients probably the night before or even consider doing that two to three nights beforehand I mean we often will tell patients to do that when they come in for a professional grade peel and if you have extra sensitive skin then you certainly want to consider stopping your topical retinoid or any other exfoliating product that you may use on a regular basis like three nights beforehand reasons being is that these ingredients are going to in general be irritating on skin on top of that you're doing a higher strength peel so that can compromise your skin barrier it can make you less tolerant of the peel in the sense you may not be able to leave it on for as long as the desired result and also you more you may more likely get redness and scabbing and then you know high risk of scarring or hyperpigmentation afterwards number two i recommend doing this at night what you want to do is cleanse your skin remove any impurities and makeup and pat your skin dry next i recommend applying a petrolatum or barrier cream to areas of the face where you don't want the peel to get on so namely like the corners of your nose the corners of your mouth maybe even the corners 
of your eyes. Kind of similarly to maybe where you've seen um, dermatologists recommend applying retinols using like a barrier cream like petrolatum is the most simple and just taking a little q-tip and dabbing a little bit of the petrolatum on these areas to really minimize any migration of the peel into these areas where it can cause irritation and burns. Next, you just open up your peel pad and you apply. You often will find that the peel pad comes with two different surfaces, a smoother surface and a more rough surface. And that is just to help you to also physically exfoliate at the same time. So you can either use both sides or just stick with one. And what you want to do is I just typically start from top down. I apply the pads on my forehead, down the nose, and then across the cheeks and on the chin. Depending on the instructions for each brand, you either leave it on for a minute or two or up to 10 minutes, like the Extruviance um, one, as tolerated. And so you can certainly just apply, make sure you've covered your entire face appropriately and then wait for that time. Or some people kind of like to go over multiple passes. It's really up to you. I, I definitely feel that the more you're rubbing on your skin, the more irritation it can result. So if you're super sensitive, I just recommend going with a pass or two and then let it let that sit. Now it's very normal for our skin to feel a little bit of burning and tangling sensation as you're applying the peel and as that peel is working on your skin. However, what you want to look out for are basically areas of redness that are hot spots. And usually what that means is if that redness continues for a long time, if you let that peel sit until the instructed time to wash off, it may potentially lead to more damaged skin barrier, more likely to hyperpigment and or even scab. Certainly that is one of the signs we watch out for clinically when we're doing these peels in office. So what you want to do is obviously leave them on for as long as you're tolerate, ideally up to the time that's recommended per brand. But if you are seeing areas that are red and starting to react, what you could consider is neutralizing that localized area before the rest of your face. So if you notice a little red spot on your cheek, what you can do is just open up that peel neutralizing pad and just dab it on that area. Therefore, you're still allowing the rest of your face to get the benefits, but not worsening that red, that red hot spot. So then after the appropriate time that's recommended, just use your neutralizing pad and you know, kind of swipe all over your face to neutralize the reaction. You can certainly splash some water on it if you want to remove any residue, but by the time you've already neutralized the reaction, you may still feel a little bit of discomfort, some, you know, see some redness and feel some burning and tangling, but rest assured that reaction has stopped. The next thing you want to do is just take good care of your skin post peel to minimize any sort of reaction and to care for your skin if any reaction did occur so that way you don't get a significant amount of hyperpigmentation or scabbing. So here I actually recommend no actives after the peel. Just go with a rich moisturizer or even petrolatum if that's what you like all over your face. So barrier creams like the Cicaplast from La Roche-Posay to a really rich moisturizer like CeraVe Skin Renewing a Moisturizer that's pretty thick or the Skin Fix Bar Triple Lipid Barrier Plus. All of these are great options. So a thick moisturizer with really no actives, particularly no actives of like additional alpha hydroxy acid, salicylic acid, or retinol is really what your skin needs and what you should be using. Now, as far as what to expect, you may wake up the next morning feeling that your skin may be a little tight. You may actually the next few days start to see some actual physical flaking or peeling of the skin and that is normal. And so if that is the case, your skin is still healing. So you definitely want to minimize and simplify your skincare routine for the next few days. So in the morning, maybe splash your face with some water or a gentle cleanser, use a good moisturizer and definitely make sure you're wearing sunscreen. In the evening, if your skin is still somewhat sensitive, irritated, red and peeling, you want to hold off on resuming your topical retinoids. So in general, I would say if you're more on the sensitive side, you may want to wait for another three days after the peel and gradually add on your topical retinoids as tolerated. But otherwise, if you wake up, your skin is feeling, looking healthy and glowy and feeling fine, then you can certainly resume your normal routine again as tolerated. And here I always say, you know, gradually add back your products one at a time as tolerated. All right guys, so that's a quick step-by-step -step on how to do your peels and how to prep your skin and take care of your skin post peel. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Remember, these peels are really meant to be done on a weekly basis. Certainly you can work your way up to doing them twice a week, but I do not recommend any more than twice a week. And also, 
also just with most skincare, consistency is really gonna be key here. And so consistent use of these peels over time, over many months is really what's gonna give you your desired results. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. Let me know if there are other, you know, step-by-steps that you wanna see and leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.